Hi, this is Dale with Computer Aftercare again, and today I want to talk to you about the tools and materials that you'll need to maintain your computer. First of all is a screwdriver set. Most households probably already have one. The most common one you'll need is a Phillips head screwdriver, although occasionally you'll need a slotted head screwdriver as well. I actually prefer to use the cordless type screwdrivers, but uh, whatever you use, I suggest you get one with a magnetized tip. Now here's the cordless screwdriver that I use. Uh, I have a couple of these I picked up at Home Depot many years ago and the lithium ion batteries they come with really hold a charge for a long time. I suggest getting one. And if you have a laptop, I would get a jeweler screwdriver set. Uh, they come with several tips, uh, slotted and Phillips of different sizes. Although if you have a laptop that uses Torx head screws, you'll probably need to buy a more specialized set. And for cleaning your computer, this is uh, very common, canned compressed air. You can buy them at most any big box store, Walmart, things like that. There's many brands to choose from, and they generally cost between about 6 and $8 a can. Although I usually pick up a three-pack at Sam's for like 10 bucks. Just be sure that when you do use these cans of compressed air that you hold the can upright when spraying. Otherwise, it's going to uh, condensate. You might have a little bit of... Uh, liquid spilling onto your electronics which is always bad and if you blow the air into any fan blades like your case fans your laptop CPU fans uh, stick something in there to hold the fan blades in place so that you don't overspin them that could possibly damage them and also because you'll be blowing debris protect your eyes now here's what I like to use uh, I bought one of these off the internet off Amazon uh, called the DataVac electric blower. I actually don't buy much of the can compressed air anymore since I bought one of these. Uh, although one of the downsides is that you do have to plug it into a power source, but uh, it's very powerful. These things will just blow air that's much, much more forceful than the can compressed air. It'll really clean out your computer very well. It comes with many different types of tips and nozzles. It's more effective and safer than the canned air because you don't have any of the, uh, what you call the accelerant that uh, the canned air comes with. It's dangerous for the for the air and it has a filter in it so it blows clean, dry, filtered air and it's safe for all electrical equipment. And for cleaning those hard to get areas, this is pretty common here. I'm sure everybody has Q-tips. If you need to clean those hard to get areas, just moisten them with a little bit of water or rubbing alcohol and clean it up. I don't recommend using cotton balls though, because they tend to leave fibers behind. And here's the rubbing alcohol I'm talking about. Uh, if you don't choose to use water, uh, there are many different percentages of solutions. Uh, a lot of them you'll find in the pharmacy sometimes are around 70 80 percent. That means there's water in it so it's okay for cleaning metals and plastics but keep those uh, 70 80 percent solutions away from the actual circuit boards. Uh, for that you'll need the 99 plus solutions that you might find at like a Home Depot, the technical alcohol. And safety glasses. Uh, if you're doing anything where you're blowing debris in the air, pr please protect your eyes. And soft cloths. Uh, use a soft cloth, you know, moisten it with uh, detergent or water and you can wipe the exterior surfaces of your computer or your laptop. And just be sure to spray whatever you're using onto the cloth itself, not directly onto the equipment. And don't use these kind of cloths for cleaning electronics like your memory, your RAM, or motherboard because they can generate electrostatic discharge which can damage electronics. And here's some microfiber lint free cloth. These are great for cleaning your LCD displays. Uh, if you wear glasses you probably have uh, a little piece of this already. And uh, you can use them for your smartphones, your laptops, your tablets, and uh, you don't necessarily need cleaning sprays with them and they can be washed and your keyboards need cleaning. Uh, these little USB powered keyboards are very handy because they're small you can keep them nearby in your desk and they're, they plug right into your USB jacks and so they're powered from your computer itself not from a power outlet and they're great for cleaning the keys on your keyboard. Now if you need something more industrial strength for getting inside your computer to clean the vents and uh, inside the case you'll want a portable vacuum cleaner. 
Now they do have some that are more specially designed that are a, a lot less uh, static creators and uh, they got nozzles that are designed for getting into those tight areas. Uh, Datavac also makes some. And a sash brush. I use these to loosen the dust while I'm either blowing or sucking the, uh, the air out of my equipment. And technically you'd want to use one that's a low static model if you can find one. And a flashlight, which is obvious if you're inside your equipment doing visual inspections, it's great to have a light because it's going to be a little bit dark in there. And you'll also want to use it in conjunction with a magnifying glass so that you can look for burned, loose, bulged, missing, broken components. And uh, in the case of the magnifying glass, it's also handy for looking at your product key or your serial number labels. Now this is uh, in a different realm. This is getting into your data backup, which is a form of maintenance. Uh, portable drives are something that everybody should have because they're very cheap nowadays and they it's very common to find a terabyte drive for for less than $100 and you can use them to back up pretty much all your data and even disk images. They're so large. Just be sure that you copy your data to these drives, not just moving it to these drives because if it isn't a second copy of your data, it isn't a backup. And for your everyday data backups, flash drives are great. These are great for just carrying around your neck on a lanyard or in your pocket. And uh, I wouldn't recommend them for long-term backups. For one, the, the size, they're not as big as portable hard drives. And the other is they don't last as long, but uh, and they could be lost but they are great for your everyday data backups. And of course a surge protector, most people already have these. It's like a power strip that uh, is designed to protect you from electrical spikes. Just know that these don't protect you from when your power is fluctuating or when you lose power. They don't make power. If you need that, you need a UPS. Now a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply, it's kind of like a fancy power strip with a built-in battery that with uh, an inverter that makes electrical power so you can plug your computer into it and if you do lose power your computer will not blink but the power how long it lasts will depend on the size of UPS you buy but typically they only last a few minutes so they're usually only good enough just to safely turn your computer off or if it is just a momentary lapse in power it'll just get you through that you won't even see it blink Anyways, that's pretty much it for the tools and materials. Uh, just wanted to show you what I use. You don't need to buy these all at one time. Some of them you probably already have, or you might have some suitable substitutes. Whatever. Uh, now you know somewhat of what a technician uses. And that's all I want to tell you about tools and materials. This is Dale with Computer Aftercare. Thank you, and bye-bye.